pretty easy, pretty short. So go ahead and log into the Google Classroom, and let me get that posted for y'all real quick. There we go. Um, material. Oh, you should hear me read the digital model. I know, right? Like, like I have no idea yet because I was struggling on the other one. Chapter three. 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 So it gives us a little bit of time. I'll do it again. Make sure to speak with you. Miss Williams. Oh. There we I, go. Like, I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, where is Miss? Yeah, she's uh, cool. Uh, I don't like this. Uh, give me a minute. I'll find it. It's in my email. All right. So I've just posted that. So everybody pull that reading out. We'll read through that today. Chapter three, lessons three through four. Where's uh, Miss Medlin's class? Katie Medlin. Uh, she is out in the courtyard. So if you go out, out into the courtyard, that's for apparel, correct? Oh, it's an English hall. Oh, English hall. Okay. Uh, remind me near the end of class, and I'll, uh, we'll look it up real quick. Okay. We'll take time to look that up. It says room 2105. I don't really know what area that's in. So. Okay. Yeah, that's up on the second floor for sure. But yeah, I'll show it to you when we get to get a second at the so end I of class. All right. Oh, oh, Haley, grab out the good Chromebook out because you're gonna need to pull up the reading that we're gonna do for today. Oh, uh, you gotta listen. I was building out the door. Get your parents to call the front office or you go to up to the front office and ask them. Let me post that. Actually, let me get that. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Ah, here we go. Is it three through four? Three through four, yep. One just posted in week five. Did you go? Did you go? I'll put it up there just so we can seize it. There we go. All right, so this is everybody at home can see it too. No, because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of asked. Have you ever rehearsed in your head and you have to finish the class? Like, all the so, time. Yeah, I, like, I just have to make sure I know where I'm going. Like, this morning I was like, wait, what class am I going to? And I was like, oh, yeah. No, I don't add that much. I'll just walk up to them and just be like, is that Benson's room that way? And I'll be like, yep, this is Stone State. And then I'll just keep going. Okay. And then if I don't see it, I'll ask another person. <laughs> all right here we go lesson two all right so today we're going to be talking about concentration and observation so we know we've, we've discussed it, i believe briefly uh i think it was last week week before last or something like that uh but these are two skills um that are really important uh for theater as far as uh number one being able to know what's going on on the stage uh and sensory awareness will help you with how your performance or how you perform a certain action on the stage. So that's the reason why I want to go through that. And today we're also going, I'm going to give you guys a take home assignment, a little project. It's real easy. You don't have to do anything uh, much as far as a way of paperwork. You may have to use like a single sheet of paper if you want to write down notes, but we'll get into that before uh, by the end of class today. All right. So let's get into lesson two, talking about concentration. And I will read this first little part here. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, four, five, 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 five. Actually, it's not that sh not that long at all. It's like only a couple of paragraphs. All right, who'd like to read that first paragraph for us? You have been told to concentrate. Anybody like to volunteer as tribute? And everybody jump up at once. I know, teacher says, oh no, he wants us to read. And everybody just... Tips up. I'll read. All right, go for it. Start from you and graduate or you go to it. You have. Okay. 
you have been told to concentrate most of your life. This is a skill that was probably difficult for you as a child because your attention span is so short. It still is. <laughs> you may still have trouble concentrating today because there is so much happening around you and you do not want to miss any of the action. Okay. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Now, I am not blind to the fact that some people do have attention deficit disorder of some sort, okay? So concentration may not necessarily be a behavioral thing so much as it is a biological and psychological issue, okay? So chem psychological as far as the chemistry, bi brain biology, okay? I get that. I'm not talking about that, okay? Um, so it's not because from a behavioral standpoint. That's not what this is talking about. All right, I'd like to read that second paragraph. Concentration is an important skill. Reva, go for it. Concentration is an important skill for you to develop. With concentration, you become more disciplined after. To concentrate, you must pay close attention to people and objects in your environment. And you must remember what you observe. You must also learn to focus on your thoughts and feelings. Okay, very nice, very nice. Concentration, so being able to stay in the moment, stay focused on what is happening. Uh, again, saying, paying attention to what is happening with other actors, happening with yourself, uh, happening with the audience. Sometimes you have to pay attention to how the audience is, is reacting. Um, sometimes it could also be a distraction because if you deliver a line of dialogue that's supposed to be a joke and the audience doesn't laugh or doesn't laugh as much as you think they probably should have or probably would have, um, that could be a distraction. Um, so it's been able to, to redirect that focus away from it, like, okay, saying to yourself, okay, that didn't work for tonight. Maybe the next audience will get that joke, or maybe it's something in the way I deliver that line. Okay. Oh, shoot, I forgot about that. Uh, let's put this on pause for just, actually, let's go ahead and get through this lesson, then I got to show you all the bus, less, bus safety videos. Yay. Um, huh? Was it a second block for us to show us that? You're right, that is second block. Thank you. Never mind, we're going to keep going. <clears throat> Random subject change, there it went. All right, uh, you have played concentration games. Who'd like to read that one? All right, Chrissy, go for it. You played concentration games throughout your schooling. You had to rely on your memory so that you could match math cards, vocabulary cards, or picture cards. You succeeded in those concentration games when you did not let anything else interfere with your goal of concentrating. You remembered what was happening and you did not let anyone break your concentration. You must maintain the same kind of focus when you are rehearsing or performing on stage. Do not let anything or anyone block out block your concentration on the character or action you are portraying. Okay, very nice, very nice. Um, so what, this is talking about a list of, of uh, possible things, uh, games and exercises to do with what's gonna be, what's listed here. Um, we've already done the uh, table of concentration thing where I had the stuff behind me where it was online. So it was a little tricky to do that one um, or, something that, or something close to that anyway. Um, but looking at number two, Staying in character, um, what does that really mean? I, I think I've explained it a little bit, but what does it mean to you? What do you think of when I say staying in character? Michaela, what do you think of? Can you repeat that again? You froze on me. Hold that thought. Hold on. Y'all's audio is not wanting to come through for a second for some reason. Hold on. All right, say something now, Michaela. Hey. There you are. There you are. All right. Can you repeat that? You froze on me for a second. Sure. Um, if you look in the reading there at number two on page 55, it's talking about staying in character. And I know I have mentioned that before in, in previous lessons, but what does that mean? What, comes, what thoughts or images come to mind when I say staying in character? What does that mean to you? What do you think that means? Um... This may not be right, but like, say, if something goes wrong, improvise. Like, say, if you forget a, a line or something goes wrong, just try and stay in character for it. Okay, yeah, that that's part of it. Yes, that's what you would do in that. But what does it what does it really mean? You kind of use the the term in the in your definition. What does that mean to you, uh, Ashley? What, is it, what do you think that means to you? Same Mm-hmm. I mean, just to just not let your surroundings make you lose, like make you forget a line or just gotta stay within, just stay, have your character be part of you and just continue, no matter what's happening around you, just continue going with it. Okay. The show must go on, I guess. 
the, the show must go on. Yeah. So that, that's part of it. So yeah. So it's, it's, I guess I'm being, I guess in my mind, I'm thinking a little bit too over direct answer, but you guys are, are very, are, are dancing right around it, touching it even. So staying in character is when you are a character on the stage, you uh, put your mindset into how that character thinks, how that character feels, how that character will react to certain situations. And staying in character means staying in that frame of mind. So you're stepping out of yourself, stepping out of Mr. Whitaker for a second, becoming that character. So if you're able to stay in character, you're able to stay in that frame of mind and that focus. If you get off character, get out of character, then you step back into yourself, saying Mr. Whitaker or Ashley, whatever, or whoever you are that's on the stage. You have the actor, you become the actor again. Um, that's a very, uh, well, almost, well, that's something different. Um, yes, so yes, staying in character means being able to continue being that character regardless of what happens. If something happens on the stage that's not supposed to happen, react how your character would react. So say, for example, with that scene from Into the Woods, when uh, Milky White lost his leg, he kind of stayed in character and kind of reacted somewhat how the, how the character would have reacted to that. I think at least I thought he did. Anybody else think he did? It's been a while since we've seen that. Remember that? Been a while? I've never seen that movie. Okay, you may have been asleep. <laughs> that may have been one of the days you, you slept in. I don't know, or, or the alarm didn't go off. I Because we were still online. Into the Woods? Mm-hmm. You guys watched that? Well, we just watched a small snippet of a stage performance of it. I think I remember I was watching a little bit of it, but okay. That was like the yeah. Oh yes, it went yeah, for sure. And here's what it sounded like. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, all right. Good morning, Lilani. Let me get your attendance fixed there too. Um, we are looking at the reading uh, posted on the Google Classroom for Chapter Three, Lessons Three through Four. So if you want to pull that I'm up. I'm talking here such a weird moment. Whatever that sound plays. Uh huh. First thing you hear. Yeah. Gotta love it. All the children at a family reunion. Uh huh. Okay, so that is concentration. They'd be like, "You're so mean to your little brother." I'm like, "You gotta prepare them for the real world." Yeah, he's a little sissy. Yeah, I something about body slamming my little cousin and grabbing her face and then my mom's like, "Oh I'm just like, "Look, mom, someone's gotta toughen her up," and I don't see anybody else doing it, so I'll take care of myself and make her tough. All right, let's go into lesson three. Observation. Observation. Who'd like to read the first three, four? Yeah, who'd like to read that very first paragraph? Very short. All right, read it. Go for it. Observation skills are valuable in appearing on stage. If you do not pay careful attention to people's address your portrayal on stage, like address. Portrayal on stage will be without substance. Okay. Very nice. All right, let's go on to the next paragraph there. Take bright Hmm? Take bright Yeah, he's there. Okay. Take him read. Good morning, Bryson. I'm going to see you. It's a tiny paragraph. Uh -huh. All right, Ashley, so you're such a volunteer. And Bryson, uh, you get to read it then. I, I want to read a big one. one. Oh, you want to, well, you got to read this one. That's since you volunteered Bryson. Because remember, if you, if you volunteer somebody one. else, that means you want to read. I want to read the next one because it's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Bryson's saying, no, no, loser. <laughs> I saw that little car that he's supposed to get whenever he gets his license. I saw it over at his mom's boyfriend's house. <laughs> so he better not be at home and not telling me. <sighs> All right, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Alondra, you want to read that second paragraph for us? Yes, under the uh, let's see, the skill of observation requires. The skill of observation requires much attention and study. When you observe people for things, you must look carefully at the details. For example, what was the teacher in your last classroom? You have to pay close attention to that to observe success through. Okay, very nice, very nice. So if you remember also when I uh, had brought up I think I deleted him off of here. Oh, no, 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 it didn't. Here he is. If he's, no, I'll move this picture. Doggone it, it's not going to come up. Nope, I deleted this picture off here. So uh, when we were online and I brought up that random picture, that random dude, that's the name of the file, by the way, random dude, um, some folks were able to see and take notice of what he was wearing. He was wearing a blue shirt. 
He was wearing a tie, he had glasses on. So being able to see and notice what those little details are. Same thing happens whenever, um, God forbid, you witness a car wreck or anything like that, or you witness some sort of crime. Police will come and investigate. They ask you what you saw, what you observed. It's all those little minute details um, that can make all the difference. Uh, case in point, when we were, when I was working at a bank, they trained us to, uh, in the event of any sort of robbery, how to uh, notice little things about each person that's the, if you know the, the suspected you know criminal that came in and robbed the, the bank. Um, and they had us fill out an entire form, had a sheet there for us to fill out of every detail that we can remember about the person. So observation is very critical when it comes to things like that. Uh, all right, so let's do, uh, uh, Ashley, so you want to read the big one, big yes. paragraph? All right, so let's start there. The way we think. The way we think, feel, or act about a person, place, or situation is called our point of view. A point of view can be literal, such as the way you see ob actual objects fitting together in a given space. It can also be figurative, involving interpretation, which result which results from your attitude toward what you see. Your point of view will have an impact on your observation. So try to get into the habit of looking at things and people from several different points of views, points of view to get a much detail, as much detail as possible. Okay, very nice. This can come into play if you, especially if you're into stage design, uh, if you're part of the design team, trying to figure out each little detail of how this world should look because of, based on this uh, such and such character. Go grab that real quick, see if it right back. Y'all don't go anywhere. Okay. There we go. Um, let's see. Christian, hang around for a second after class. We'll talk to you just a second about uh, your attendance status as far as virtual or cohort. Okay. So don't let me forget that. Okay. Uh, what was I talking about here? Um, point of view. All right. Cool. So who'd like to read that next one? As an actor. people every day and remember what they look like and how they behave. You have to pay close attention to the way your body moves, such as how you hold a cup, brush your teeth, or walk through a door. All right, why is that important in drama? Who can think of a reason why that's important? Because some people do things differently. So whenever you're playing a character, you have to do it the way they do. Exactly. That's exactly right. So say, for example, if you're playing, let's say, um, you're trying for whatever reason you're in a show about Madonna, okay? And you are playing Madonna, the character, okay? You you probably want more than likely the best thing you could do is to study how Madonna moves, how her man her mannerisms. So you go back and watch some of her uh, interviews. You go back and watch some of her performances. How does she do such some such movements? How does she hold a drinking cup? How does she hold herself? How does she hold a pencil, a bag, a, a puppy, or whatever? Okay, that way you. You can know how best to portray that character and make the audience believe that you are said character. That's important. That's why that's important for drama. All right. Uh, I'd like to read that last paragraph. All right, Reba. This sounds like work, and it is. It isn't easy being an actor and creating a believable world on stage. Developing your observation skills will give you ideas to use in your performances and will make you more aware of the world around you. Yes. So even the little minute details um, of a character uh, can be important to the realism, to the audience believing that you are that actual character on the stage, stepping you stepping out of the way so that that character can shine through. And it can be even the most minute little thing that some audiences, especially if it's a beloved character, um, that even the most minute little thing can take that audience member out of the world that's being portrayed on the stage. And the whole point, uh, one of the goals of drama is to keep the audience in that world for that moment, trying to limit and reduce the amount of distractions that would take them out of that world. Okay, very nice. So we're gonna come back to that daily actions. That's actually gonna be your assignment there, but I wanna get into sensory awareness first because that will help you with 
that assignment. All right, so now let's go into lesson four here. Sensory awareness. Who remembers what sensory awareness is? We talked about the definition earlier. Anybody remember what that is? Nobody remembers? Isn't it just like where you're aware of all your senses, like your hearing and everything? Essentially, yeah. Paying particular attention to it, yes. So I can get the power school to function. There we go. Oh, that's why he showed up in here. He's supposed to be in here today. Okay. I did not see that. Okay. Let's see. Good morning, uh, Emily. I saw you come in. Let me fix that real quick. Uh, let's see, while we get into that. So yeah, sensory awareness. It's being aware of your senses, sight, sound, taste, smell, touch, okay? Uh, who would like to read the first paragraph and then who'd like to read that second paragraph? So who'd like to do the first one? Let's, do, let's go ahead and get two in a row here. I like the first one. Okay, Ashley, get the first one. All right, and Michaela, do you want to read the uh, second paragraph for us when it comes to it? Yeah. yeah. All right, go for it, Ashley. As mentioned earlier in the chapter, concentration, observation, and sensory recall are all closely related. Together, these three personal resources can help you as you portray character different from yourself. All right, Michaela, go for it. I'm lost. I can't find the spot. Uh, when your sensory awareness is sharp. Lesson four, second paragraph. We're on page 59, if that helps. That's like a weird clown thing inside of Okay, yes. you When your sensory awareness, so it's the second paragraph. Is it, um, so it says do not take anything from granted? No, so uh, the paragraph that. above that. Sensory activities. Sensory activities. Uh, yeah, when your sensory awareness is sharp. If you look on the screen, I'll highlight it for you right there. Okay, hold up. Oh, oops. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Just have a long moment for a little bit. It's a morning, okay. I get that. All right, go for it. All right. When your sensory awareness is sharp, you can easily recount how something tastes, smells, looks, sounds, or feels. Sensory awareness is more than just seeing, hearing, or touching something when you are truly aware of your senses. You absorb every detail in an item, experience and attempt to make associations with other items, and experience colors, textures, and patterns are, more, are important in these experiences. Your senses must be so keen that you can recall every detail. Keep going. Uh, let's see. No, you're good. Okay. Dude, what now? I said I feel like she just ate fried chicken. Who, Michaela? What? What happened? They're loving on your accent, Michaela. <gasps> really? Thanks, guys. Appreciate <laughs> it. Just like recal. <laughs> Like, I was playing with my friend last night. He was like, what's the matter with your accent? I said, that's just the Johnson County in me. <laughs> well, see, that just means you're perfect if we ever do the show Oklahoma. Exactly. Because I think most people in this county would be would be all set. They wouldn't have to struggle with the accent to make their character character believable. If I'm, if I'm like, really happy or, like, really mad, that's whenever, like, I'm really angry. Uh-huh. So, mine, um, mine comes out when I'm tired, so. I get that. Oh no! Sometimes my country accent will just like ring and come out and be like, "Why are you talking like that?" I'm like, 
All right, let's see here. Uh, oh, like another tip. If I'm reading too fast, just tell me. Okay. Oh, trust me, we will. We'll she let you know in a heartbeat. She said patterns. That's how my dad says. And then he says furniture. <laughs> I said furniture. <sighs> All right. Who wants to read that next paragraph? Do not take anything for granted. Anybody? Okay, go for it, Haley. Do not take anything for granted as you participate in the following sensory activities. It is important for the author or to the actor to fully expand each of the senses. Senses. In fact, it is only when we lose one of these senses that we fully realize its significance in helping us understand the world around us. The actor that makes his or her his or her words and actions work on stage has not missed a single detail, showing great sensitivity to the objects, people, and places surrounding him or her. As you carry out the activities to develop your sensory awareness, think of each sense as a key to your future performances. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, so let's do this one. This let's do this one right here. All right. So the sensory awareness exercise. So I want everybody to close your eyes, completely close your eyes, clear your mind. Okay. And I want you to recall in your mind how each of the following objects I'm going to call out look. How do they look, first off? It's a lot to remember. Okay. So here's the first one. A mushroom. Imagine how that looks in your mind. A mushroom. Okay. Chrissy, what are you seeing in your mind? That time I accidentally picked up a mushroom at work and it felt really gross. Okay, what does it look like? Describe it to us. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a ball. It's, okay. It's round, it's short, well, the stem's really short, kind of fat. Mm -hmm. It's brown. Like, like that really ugly grayish brown. Mm hmm. Okay. It's the kind of color that you never want to see ever again. <laughs> Okay, very nice. All right, uh, Christian, if you got your ears on, uh, what does your uh, mushroom look like? The mushroom that you envisioned. One second, see if I put it in chat. Let's see. Uh, Bryson, you'll type it in chat or if you want to click your mic on, you can. Uh, what did the mushroom in, the, that you envisioned, what did it look like? Describe it for us. Okay, Bryson doesn't want to do anything. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, all right, anybody else want to describe the mushroom that they saw? That's it. Okay, so what did you see? I saw like mushrooms on pizza. Mushrooms on pizza, all right, so describe them. What do they look like? Like they look like black, like super colored, and kind of like flimsy. Okay, <laughs> all right, very nice. All right, close your eyes. We're going to do another one. Okay, a dirty sock. Imagine a dirty sock and describe it. Okay. Okay. Tyrese, describe your sock to us. What does it look like? Dirty sock. A sock. Mm -hmm. Dirty sock. Um, oh. Okay. okay. Any particular colors, textures? Well, we'll get the texture in a minute. In a second, this is just sight right now. The white sock. White sock. Okay. Any particular features on it? Um, dirt stains. Just dirt stains. Okay. Nice. Nicely done. Okay. 
Now, let's see. So that's seeing an object. So these are all objects you obviously can imagine visually in your mind, all right? So now let's add another layer to it. You're envisioning it, visualizing it in your mind, but now you're gonna add smell, okay? Add the sense of smell to it, okay? So close your eyes, okay? And I want you to imagine what it looks like and what it smells like, adding another layer, a piece of toast that is burnt. Piece of toast that is burnt. Okay? So once you get that image in your head, in your mind's eye, and in your mind's nose, because you're going to recall the smell of it, uh, somebody describe that to me. How does that make you feel? And what does it look like to you? Right. Haley, you want to try yours? Um, it smells like really charred and mm -hmm. gross. And like whenever you open up a uh, charcoal grill and it's like been sitting for a while, you know what that smells like? Mm -hmm. And then like, uh, like, I guess it's super hard and like crunchy and it's just like black. And really good. Okay. So how does it make you feel when you envision that sight and smell? Um... It makes me feel like you're going to have a stroke. Because <laughs> I've heard that if you smell burnt toast, you're going to have a stroke. And I can just like really smell it right now. <laughs> well, no, you won't have a stroke, but I you'll definitely not burnt, feel good. I would burn toast. <laughs> so that's something you enjoy. Just just cover it up. Just cover it up with like some like jam or something. Mm -hmm. Cover it up. You don't even have to put butter and cream cheese. Anything can be hidden. Exactly. <laughs> I can't do that, no. All right, so now Bryson, Bryson is entering the, the realm of fantasy here because he said, I never burnt toast. <laughs> He's probably never cooked toast. <laughs> did, did you hear what Ashley said, Bryson? Just making fun of him. Gonna make fun of Bryson. <laughs> oh, he says he's never eaten toast. He doesn't eat toast. Exactly. Okay. See, see, I was right, actually. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's do another one here. All right, uh, close your eyes again. And let's talk about the smell of fudge. Fudge. Let's do something pleasant. All right. How does that make you feel? And what do you think of when you smell, think of the smell of fudge cooking? Can you be like any type of fudge? What? Can you be any type of fudge? Any type of fudge? Yeah, I don't care. Okay. It's your imagination. Okay, so now let's think of another one. Uh, pine trees or cedar trees. The smell of pine trees, the smell of cedar trees. How does that make you feel? You ever walk in the woods? Mm, yeah, but like, I smell pine trees. Like, <laughs> oh, trust me, every spring you do. See, I have Yellow haze. I have really bad uh, oh my God. Snake. Uh, I'm a deviated septum. That's what it's called. Deviated septum. That would definitely affect that, yeah. Yeah, I'm not that good at smelling. <laughs> All right. So smelling. All right. So now let's move on to uh, uh, hearing, sound. All right. So let's think of uh, your favorite song, favorite music. How does that make you feel? Open floor, anybody can answer. How does that make you feel when you think about hearing your favorite song? Inspired. Inspired? Grooving. Grooving, okay. It makes me want to like, do something. Makes you want to do something, so you start kind of feel a little productive? Yeah. Okay. Okay, inspired. Okay, Bryson says depressed. Okay, that's sad. He looks so sad. There is one song that I absolutely love that makes me cry every time, but I absolutely love it though. What song is it? It's Be Alright by uh, Dean Lewis. I don't know why, it just always makes me cry. I don't really feel so bad for it. I don't and then also, songs, but uh, it's a country crazy. song, and it's like, I don't know, something about this homeless man that he, that was like sleeping, and Stu woke him up, and he was like, I'm, I was almost home, because he was like about to die. Mm -hmm. And I'd be home, like in heaven. Is I know that song. Oh my I, God, I, I heard can't remember it. what it's called. But that, my dad told me the meaning of that song when I was just jamming to it. And I'm just like, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like uh, the, uh, the song Whiskey Lullaby. Have you heard that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've not heard that song, look that one up on YouTube. 
sing that when I was a kid, and then I re listened to it one day, and I'm just like, I looked at my mom and I was like, why did you let me sing this? And I was like, <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god! Oh yeah. Uh, and just for reference, just because something is from the '90s or lived through the '90s, grew up in the '90s, they are not old. Yeah, they are. <laughs> my sister was born in 90. I like the 90s, so I'm not like My wife 90. was born in 94, so no, 90 before 95, 95. So I, I, I like the 90s. I'm not going to like it now. You guys are like knocking off the door, you know what I mean? Well, because we're teachers. Most people feel old after they hit 40. You kidding me? I feel old at 34. I'm about to turn 35. All right, hold that thought. Got another phone call. I feel like I was reincarnated. I feel you're like. Right. Yes. Uh, if you'll sign out, you can check that. Uh, sign out over there and use the bathroom that's beside the uh, media center. So I'm straight up that hallway. I feel like in a past life, I was a deaf old man. You were a deaf old man? Huh? Yes. I was a deaf Wait, old what man. does that song mean, though? Is this one I'm talking about? I see the other one. Oh, don't take it. I'm going to search on that song. Isn't it about like rape or something? It's about this girl, and there's one part where they get like robbed at gunpoint, and he's like, "Look, you can take everything that I have, just don't hurt her." And then she like is having a baby. My sister played this in the song, and I cried like the whole way home after listening to that song. I actually and she's like, "Well, I'm stuck there for a moment. I think I did something to you." Well, I actually don't like country music at all, but I've heard it for the first time. I'm still listening to it all weekend. Okay. I can't watch the video. Which one? Don't take a girl. Yeah. Trust me, it did the same thing to me when I first heard it as a kid. Okay, uh, let's move on. Taste. So we know about hearing. Uh, what about taste? Uh, how about the taste of a lemon slice? Taste of a lemon slice. How many of you just at the thought <clears throat> of tasting a slice of lemon, your cheeks just kind of start tensing up? Your lips start, start just instantaneously started tensing up. Mine do that all the time. Yours did? Uh huh. I just eat like lemons you're, raw. So. You eat yeah, them raw? Me too. I They're love good. Lemon. I do too. Like, like, I, I always get water with lemon because I just want the lemon. Yes, dude, I love lemon. Bryson says, No, I eat lemons it's as a like, baby. Like, so you enjoy them, Bryson. So he, Bryson enjoys them. Okay, okay, very nice. All right, uh, let's see. How about? I'm sure you put salt on lemon. All right, how about this one? Cough syrup. Cough syrup. I'm just. Oh, that's good. That makes me want to gag. I hate cough syrup. It's gritty, and you can like. You gotta get the good kind. Yeah, you gotta get the good kind. Yeah, you gotta get the good grape one. It's like smooth. Whatever goes down. Yeah, that's a good kind. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, Bryson said the same thing, talking about the grapes. Yeah, grape flavor, yeah. Okay. All right, what about ice? Tasting ice. Ice is good. Ice is good? <laughs> Especially if you get that ice from Chick-fil-A. Oh, my gosh, yes. I love that ice. Yep. And uh, Smithville Chicken and Barbecue has it, too. All right, let's go on to, uh, let's see, touch. Touch. How does it? How does this feel to you? Okay, a glass of iced tea. Cold, wet, because it's like condensation. Cold, wet, condensation. Oh, mm -hmm. oh it makes you think of the summer and how life is so good. I hate the cold so much. <laughs> I hate the cold. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the opposite way then. Let's talk about the bark of a tree. Rough. Bark of a tree feels rough. Bumps. Okay. Bryson says moist. I have yeah. just because I watched I watched uh, the Jungle Book and I saw him do it and I was like I want to see what that feels like. So you know I was I was just seeing bare necessities while I were on my back against the tree when I was like six. <laughs> just because why not? And then your mother spent two hours pulling splinters out of your back. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk, how about sandpaper? Sandpaper, think about how that feels. Uh, I don't 
Okay. How would you how would you act out using sand touching sandpaper? How would you act that out? How would you how would you visually show that? Like, you just like kind of like rub against. I don't know. Like, like unless you were holding it and actually sanding something, you just yeah. like that kind of, or just like. Just, okay. All right. I don't know. All right. What about velvet? Ooh, oh my god, velvet. Oh, velvet. 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 I'll rub against my face. I have like velvet pants. <laughs> okay. It depends on what object it is. That's yeah, it just like depends really on what it's on. Like, I don't want it on my clothes. Like, All right. No, I don't know. It's like, there's like these velvety feeling scrunchy things I have at home. Mm -hmm. And like for some, and like Matthew always makes fun of me for this. But he'll be like, hey, Lauren, touch this. And I'm just like, ew, that's, that feels gross. And, and it's like comfort texture. See, okay. I, I like it like on like pillows or like scrunchy, but like not really on anything else. Okay. Like All right. How about this? As you're touching that okay. object, what other senses are you using, or what other senses help you to remember the sensation of the touch of, say, sandpaper? Let's go with sandpaper. The sound it makes when you like rub it between your fingers. The oh, sound it makes. Okay. It's like nails like, you know, on chalkboard. Okay. What else? Do what? Just like the graininess. I don't know. Okay. So where were you when you last touched these items? Say sandpaper, for example. You were at work with your dad. I was in the, I was in my barn. Okay, you were in the barn. I was sitting on the porch sanding the paint off my ukulele. Okay, good. All right, so what activity you were engaged in? You were sanding your ukulele. Okay. All right, nice. So what emotion were you feeling? Ugh. Ugh. Okay, a little disgust. It was like hot like, outside and it was super rainy, so I was sweaty and it was broken. Okay, so it, feeling gross, discomfort. It's just like, it, it was just, you just don't like the sound and also how it feels. It's just not satisfying. Okay, all right. So yeah, all of these things come into play when you're on the stage. So if your character is asked to eat a lemon wedge, use that, that sensory awareness, that data that you have processed in your mind, how your reaction to said object happened, and make that part of your character. Unless your character is the opposite of you, then you have to imagine, okay, how would my character react to this? And how can I create and react as this character does? That's whether Madonna likes lemon, lemon or not. Exactly. Or if she likes velvet. Or she may hate velvet. Okay? That kind of a thing. So that's why this background information that you have through the study of life, your study going through life, if that's your study of life, okay? That's the information you have. Using that information, that knowledge, using it on stage as you would possibly, or the opposite, as your character or, or, or as your character might be the opposite of you. So something you have to figure out how to react to the opposite way of of uh, how you would sometimes. Okay. Um. Let's see here. All right. So. We are here to eleven eight thirty. Okay. Um, so for your homework, let's do this. There's your homework. Okay. I want you to go home today and to all day tomorrow. I want you to choose an activity, mundane everyday activity that you do. And I want you to observe yourself, meaning I want you to observe and take note of how you do said actions such as uh, observe in as much detail as you possibly can and be able to perform a simple reenactment of said activity. So you could be like making a sandwich, brushing your teeth, channel surfing, using the TV remote control or, you know, surfing the net, okay, watching Netflix or what have you, working on your computer, dialing a phone number, drinking a cup of hot chocolate, zipping up a jacket, turning on a light, opening the door of a car, standing in line at the cafeteria, the, such as it is out there when we have to do it nowadays, carrying your books to class, buttoning a coat, shooting a basketball, throwing a football, serving a tennis ball, combing your hair, any one of those things, okay? Choose one, and then I want you to observe yourself how you do it. How does your arm move when you're trying to shoot the basketball? How does your, how's your form? How's your stance? If you're making a sandwich, do you use your right hand? Do you use your left hand? Do you use both sides of the butter knife when you're spreading the mayonnaise or the mustard onto it? Okay. Do you uh, clench your teeth 
when you are, you know, set up your jacket, you know, whatever it may be, take a note of how you perform these everyday activities, then make a note of it, write it down so that if you have to remember it, then on Thursday, or at least when we're able to come back, excuse me, when you guys are able to come back, um, we'll come back and we'll actually perform that. I'll have you perform it in class for everybody, for those that would like to. Okay, so you'll have several days to be able to do it. Okay, so those of you at home, I want you to do the same thing. So we'll do it. So for cohort two, you guys will be in cohort two. We'll do this uh, for you guys on Thursday. Okay, so be practicing that. Those of you in cohort one, we'll have your performances on Monday when you're back in class. Okay, sound good? Yes. Yes. There's a pass. You get a pass. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about that? And I'll put this in Google Classroom so you guys can uh, so you guys can remember it. I'll take note of it. Okay. And in fact, I'll even set it up so where you can uh, use that and turn that in. Um, so we'll make your observations, and then that's what I want you to turn in on Google Classroom. Turn in your observations of yourself doing that. Or if you want to, uh, you can even record yourself and upload it that way. Either way, I don't care. Whichever way you want to do it, it's totally fine. Okay, totally fine with that. Anybody have any questions on how to on what to do with it? How to do that? You good? You good? You good? You good? You good? You didn't even see me. <laughs> you good, Ty? Now, do you mind if I call you Ty? You just want? To, do you want to be called by Tyrese? I wanted to ask you that for a couple times. I keep forget. Call you Ty? Okay. Do people call you Ty? Most people call me Reese. Call, call you Reese? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll call you Reese. Then. I, I didn't know if you had a nickname or anything. I think I've just kept forgetting to ask you. I get distracted, so I have to ask you. So, if, if, by the way, if you have a nickname or another name you prefer to, for me to call you by, please let me know. I will be, I, I don't mind. I, I want to call you by what you want to be called by, okay? Except for Bryson, who probably wants to be called by some kind of weird name just to try to test me. Because I know he'd do it. Just like you call, you call Lauren uh, Cressy, now I start calling her Cressy. Well, that's, so she that's, asks, that's what she prefers. Yeah. She, actually, you told me that, what, day one? Uh, I know that was three years ago now, so. I got some yes. bad news. Oh, what is it? I'm curious. You guys, I have dance tonight, and I forgot to practice. <laughs> 